Good afternoon. We'll begin on page 355. And blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Father, we give you thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the labors of those who harvest them. Make us, we pray, faithful stewards of your great bounty for the provision of our necessities and the relief of all who are in need. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 100. Psalm 100 on page 729. Page 729, Psalm 100. And let us read it in unison. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. When the crowd found Jesus on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you were looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must, we, what must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. 
Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. I saw on Facebook earlier today, it was the uh, page Episcopal Church Memes. I don't know if y'all have subscribed to this or not, but it said, Celebrating Thanksgiving this week? Well, go thank an Anglican, because we're the church that chased the Puritans out of England in the first place. You're welcome, America. (laughs) So today is the, the eve of Thanksgiving, and in the life of the church, the eve of is the same thing as the day of. So therefore, happy Thanksgiving to you all. Now, just some history, because you know how much I love history. The custom of Thanksgiving Day originated in 1621, when Governor Bradford of the Plymouth Colony appointed a day of public praise and prayer after the first harvest. And then there, quickly after, the practice spread throughout the other New England colonies. And the first national observance of Thanksgiving Day was when President Washington, at the request of Congress, recommended to the people of the United States that Thursday, the 26th of November, year of our Lord, 1789, to be a day of public thanksgiving and prayer, to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many and signal favors of Almighty God. And this proclamation was to encourage the American people to beseech Almighty God to pardon our national and other transgressions, to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue, and to grant unto all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as God alone knows to be best. That was the very first national observation of Thanksgiving Day. And it took place on the date that we now know it, the fourth Thursday of November. And so tomorrow will be the 232nd annual Thanksgiving Day. And as it just so happens in 232 years as a nation, in a lot of ways, we may have forgotten some of President Washington's words of what this day was supposed to be, to be set apart for public Thanksgiving and prayer, a day to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue. Instead, for most, Thanksgiving is morphed into a secular holiday. The best example is TV's Food Network is now the Thanksgiving Network, and the rest of the world is celebrating the eve of Black Friday, or starting up the machine of the economic and commercial powerhouse of Christmas shopping. But you know, to be fair, Thanksgiving really hasn't lost all of its Christian character because many of us still hold this day special to gather with family and friends, to gather in prayer, for it to be a time of charity and giving, a day to be thankful. But, you know, I'm going to say it, let us never forget for whom we are saying thanks. For it is always through Jesus Christ that we give our unlimited and ultimate thanks. Because Christ is the one who has given us life, Christ is the one who has given us forgiveness. Christ is the one who has made us his brothers and sisters and given us a place in his kingdom. And so for that reason, tomorrow when you're sitting down, looking and sitting at the table with your family and friends, when you're looking at the food, when you're counting all your many blessings that we get to share, I encourage you to keep Jesus Christ at the center of your thoughts. In a way, tomorrow is your own Eucharist in your very own home. Because Eucharist, after all, is just a Greek word that means thanksgiving. And so what makes our Eucharist, what it is, what makes our Eucharist so special 
is because of the real presence of Christ among us. And through that real presence, our active living and giving our life back to Christ. That's at the center of what makes the Eucharist the Eucharist. And so I encourage you to purposefully bring that connection, bring that dependence that you have, that dependence upon Jesus Christ, that dependence that you experience here, bring that back to your families tomorrow when you sit around the table for your Eucharist, for your Thanksgiving dinner. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus said that I am the bread of life. The bread of life, the bread that never goes bad, the bread that replaces our frail and fallen bodies and replaces it with the very body of Jesus Christ. So tomorrow at your Eucharist, when you're passing around all the wonderful breads, whether it be fried pistolets or cornbread or monkey bread or crescent rolls, Hawaiian rolls, cinnamon rolls, dinner rolls, danishes, pies, or whatever you might invent for tomorrow, take the time to give thanks for the bread of life. Jesus, the bread of life, in you, among you, and being shared between you. Jesus says that I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And he did that because he loved us. And he, give, he did that, and there's nothing we can do to take it away. And for that reason, we give thanks. So happy Thanksgiving. To God be the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As you're able, please kneel for our prayers of the people. The prayers of the people are form three, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, remembering those victims of COVID and the hurricanes in Dayton. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things to your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now as found on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. 
The peace of our Lord be always with you. Please share the peace. Peace, Joe. Okay, y'all be seated just for a moment. Uh, no real announcements, just I hope you'll have a, a, a good Thanksgiving tomorrow uh, with family or loved ones. And remember that uh, if, <laughs> if you don't have family in the area, or my joke is if you don't want to spend time with family in the area, uh, you're all more than welcome to come and spend Thanksgiving with us here at St. Barnabas for our kind of Thanksgiving potluck. Uh, the other announcement is on Sunday morning between the services, we'll be doing our Advent wreath making. Uh, we have the wreaths, we have the candles, just bring your own greenery uh, to come and make Advent wreath as we prepare for the, the season. Okay. In all things, let us continue to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God. Please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. We'll continue with Eucharistic Prayer A on page 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. 
Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Beloved, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Behold what you are. Become what you receive. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Please stand. 
Let us go forth in the name of Christ.